Hi guys, hope you're well. I am really excited about what's in this box and I hope it does live up to expectations. So, right, a little bit of a backstory about this product. So, as you know, I have a place in France and I am really struggling to find any good quality timber. Construction grade timber, fine, I can find it all over the place, not a problem. But joinery grade timber, I really struggle to find it. Softwoods and hardwoods, I just can't find it. Now, of course, we all know they're there. I'm just not looking in the right place. I've just not had time to go looking in the right places. The big box stores equivalent, the Leroy Merlans, the Brico Marshes, the Tree Domes, the Misha Bricolage, just don't sell anything that's either good quality or reasonably priced. It's just, just crazy. I mean, I can walk up the road here to the local shop and buy some really good unsorted softwood joiner grade timber, but yet I can't go to a big box store and buy it. I mean, this is Latvian forested redwood timber. It's lovely timber from a local shop. Usually, if you want a piece of inch before in France, it's made up of little pieces, but about 600 mil long and about 25 mil wide, all glued up into a piece. When I eventually get some time over there, I need to go on a wreck here and try and find some of these mills that can actually sell some decent grade timber. So that's one job I need to do, and that actually might be a future video on this. Now, I've been looking at pages of magazines and more recently Instagram and things like that, of people who have these own mill, own milling machines so they can mill their own timber. And I mean, some of them are fantastic. They're milling 20 foot long timber that's eight foot wide. I haven't got a tree anywhere near that size. And even if I had, I wouldn't actually dare to fell it. Most of the trees I have in my garden are kind of 12, 14 inch diameter at most. I have a lot that's only six, eight inch diameter. Mostly oak, there's some walnut and there's some cherry in there. I've, I've milled some of that myself. I sometimes cut some for firewood and then I, I've milled a bit with my electric Oregon chain, so I bought from Screwfix, cut it down and made little bits of furniture. I made a table, which is, there's a video on this channel of me making a, a table. And because I cut it with a chainsaw and it's a bit wonky and a bit wobbly then, it just takes a bit longer to use the, the router sled just to router it down to three inch, two inch timber, whatever we need. But once it's kind of three inch, then it's manageable on the table saw. So, as I said, I've been looking at Instagram and the bits of equipment and the other week I came across this product this product which is a small Alaskan mill that attaches to the chainsaw and then I thought that's just perfect for what I want so I went to buy it it wasn't cheap it was $200 went to buy it and the American company who make it wanted $107 to ship it to the UK so I thought well that's not going to happen so I then continued my search a little bit further and I actually found that there was a company in the UK. I'll link the company in the description should you want to go and have a further look that sold it for the same price of £200. So it's not, it, you know, it's not a cheap piece of kit. But they were going to post it for £6 and I thought, OK, I'll, I'll buy it off them. So I bought it, I expect it to take a long, long time to come because I thought they may have to put a stock in and order into America. And I got a notification within an hour to say it'd be delivered the next day. Fantastic service. So that was one stroke of luck. The second stroke of luck is while I was looking on Instagram, I found a guy who was using this particular mill and I sort of liked a few of his pictures. Then I sent him a message and then, then I went over to his YouTube channel, watched a couple of his videos and sent him a little message saying, great, I think that I've just actually bought one of these. That actually then started a conversation up that went back and forth for a bit. And he told me a lot about chainsaws, a lot about milling, what to do, what not to do. Really good information. This guy's YouTube page is called Fox Ridge Slabs. So shout out to Fox Ridge Slabs. Go and have a look at his Instagram and his YouTube channel. There's some good information there and he uses, doesn't use just this, he uses much larger pieces of equipment. But it's really good information, really nice guy. Go and say hello over there. So without any further ado, let me just clear the bench off and I'll get a knife and we'll open this box and see what's inside. Ooh. Oh, well, there's some good things in here straight away. Realise 
and they sent me a really nice chainsaw catalogue. That's a lovely read. And actually, I'll come on to this point later. I didn't realise I was going to get that, so that is really good. And there we go. So, Granberg Alaskan Sawmill for chainsaw bars of 20 inch or less. Granberg is not to be confused with Granville. Granville, the fetch your cloth. I'm doing this. Clamps onto your chainsaw bar, no drilling. Converts chainsaws into portable milling machines. At least 500cc, I'll come on to that in a minute. High quality US aircraft aluminium and steel, very nice. CNC, lightweight and portable. Mill planks up to 18 inch wide. Probably not got a plank that wide to mill anyway, but okay. Perfect for homeowners, woodworkers. We sorted then. Right, so let's open this box then. That's quite interesting because it says on their website, when I tried to order it directly from their website, it says that they can no longer offer a piece of perspex because of manufacturing costs. So I didn't expect that, to, I don't know, I was expecting a board or some piece of plywood or something, I'm not quite sure. Right, so we have an instruction book of how it goes together and to be fair, there is a lot of parts. A sticky label on some other bits of stuff about there, look at that, other stuff that they sell. Where shall we have his Graham Berg sticker? Probably on the band sauce. So what we've got is a bag of bolts. So it's come to our attention that due to quality performance, the 0805F carriage bolts that were included with your recent Gramberg were not the threads easily compatible with others. So I'm guessing that the stuff that's, the bolts that are in there, have to be replaced by them bolts. We have got a one of them, very nicely machined. I'm sure it's aluminium. Okay. We have one of them. We have one of them. One of them. One of them, which hopefully helps us to put it together as well. And then we have the main bit of the one of them which is very very weighty two of them right we're done so we need number fives first of all thickness rails we've got a number six which is a on off bar number 15 tie bar, a number 17 which is an handle, a number 18 which is a grip which goes onto the said handle, and then number 13 is a pressure bolt. So this is the bit that fixes onto the chain saw. That's going to be interesting. So that's actually all one piece. Okay, we need to open this. This is where you have a slight disadvantage when you have an MFT workbench because everything falls down the holes. We have got one of them, one of them, one of them, six of them. I had two carriage bolts in said grooves. And then drop on this little monkey. Right, like that. So let's do that. That's done. Over to 
two and two. Okay, this goes down there a bit, okay. Anything before the you read the instructions that goes on there. And that goes on there. Give these a little nip. Put it on right way around this time. Let me see about it if I didn't have things. It's because I'm too busy reading Fig 7 goes to Fig 9 and not actually looking at the pictures. Right, there we go. With these sort of runners on the inside. And these go that way. There we go. Not tighten them up yet. Okay. Tighten these up. I've hidden under there. That on there. There we go. Oh, I could fit it if I so if I cut at that, I'd cut a four inch slab. Okay. So this is where the next phase comes in. I need to buy a chainsaw that is powerful enough to run this. So they're saying in, in here I need a chainsaw of at least 500 cc so that's on my shopping list and i also need a solid chainsaw bar now this is the thing i didn't appreciate actually until a few days ago the difference between chainsaws have different bars if you want usually the cheaper end would appear to have a laminated bar and also chainsaws that have a lightweight bar to make the machine lighter is also laminated. So it's basically it's two pieces of metal, the long thin bar with a piece of metal between. So in essence, it's hollow in the middle. So when you clamp this down on your chainsaw bar, you're gonna squish it and then stop the chain moving correctly. So I need to get a chainsaw of at least 500 cc with a solid bar. I appreciate that using chainsaws is really dangerous. I have experience of using chainsaws for tree felling and for firewood cutting, but I've never really done this before, apart from very small scale stuff with free hand. But what I do have here, and I'm hoping I can just show you roughly how this will work. As I said at the beginning of the video, please don't expect to get, watch this video and see me cutting logs because I just obviously can't do it here. I just haven't got the space or the correct equipment. I've got here my whole chainsaw, which has actually been in the shed waiting to go for its service. And first of all, ugh, let me get it out here. It's got a bag on it because it's a bit oily. It's underpowered, it's only 300cc, so it's certainly not do the job that I need this to do. It's very oily as well. It's got a lightweight laminated bar, so you can see it's laminated, you can see the rivets here. So basically you've got two pieces like this, and then it's hollow in the middle. The solid ones are a solid piece of steel, and then the tip where the little cogwheel is at the end, I'm sure has a proper name, is actually removable. You can take some rivets out and remove the end just to replace that little bit. But this is all in one piece. This is not, so it won't do, but just for the sake of showing you this. Right. Let's just protect the top with some cardboard. It goes in that way and it slides in like that. We're just going like that. Put that in there, and then these tighten up, and basically pinch the chainsaw into that position. I say right here, that's restricted then by that bracket there. So that goes in ever so slight pressure on this because I don't want to 
bend the bra chainsaw as well. So that's as much pressure as I'm going to put on it. So it sits in like there, it's only just got it. So then it's going to cut half inch. You can see, can you see? There's half inch, it's like through there. Wood that I free handed, and you, you can see how good my free handing were. We strike the chainsaw up and we cut it. Now, I know this, I'll just have a look, there is some information here, and I have seen people cutting it down a ladder. I've used the ladder myself for a few little bits of using router slaves but basically this and obviously if you do that it's going to follow the contour of the log and I have seen people do that I have seen a lot of people setting the log up with guide rails so when they go down with the first cut it's absolutely spot on yeah and then you go down your log and then once you've got a nice flat cut to reference from then you can move this down to from half inch which is the closest it'll, it would cut down to 12 inch in my mind I'll probably cut two and three inch two and three inches nice then to go across your saw so it's as much as I can show you in here sadly I'm actually really excited but I need to go chainsaw shopping so it's brilliant that they've sent me a still catalogue hopefully you'll see this in action some point this summer when I'm over in France uh, where I can actually use it properly I'm hoping now I've got this reputable brand good quality it'll last me as long as I need it to last me for so there we are guys some potential free of course there's no such thing as free anything it costs machines it costs petrol and it costs time but than that free timber again sorry if you're disappointed when you watch this video you were expecting me to see to see me cutting up some planks uh, obviously that's not possible I've not got the right equipment and I've, I've certainly not got the space to do that other than that I hope you enjoyed the video massive thank you for Levi over at Fox Ridge Slab for giving me some advice and let me use his film footage I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea put my feet up and read that still catalogue and until next time bye well first of all the packaging is still heavy Oh my goodness, it's all 